Hello. Well, hello and welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. Hey! We've been a little MIA, but we've been doing good work and spending time with family too. For those of y'all who don't know, that means missing in action. Oh my gosh, does someone not know what that means? Is that mansplaining? Yeah. <laughs> we were on the low carb cruise. For a week. Uh, for a week. Mm. Then we were in San Antonio visiting family. Now for a week. Now we're back home. And we are very happy to be yes. back home. We had fun, but there's no place like home. That's the truth. That is the truth. Ken Berry missed his sheep. Yep, I did. He missed his chainsaw. <laughs> yes, I did. 100%. I missed my puppies and my kitty cats yes. and my chickens. We had our babies with us, so we didn't have we to miss We didn't have them. to miss the babies. No. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Where in the world are you watching from? What city, what state, what country? Where are you at right now? Put it in the comments. I'm going to see where you're at. Oh, thanks. Well, uh... for the next hour, we're going to be trying to answer as many questions from you as we can about health, nutrition, medications, politics. No, no, just no. kidding. Not politics. No. no, no. But if you've got a question <laughs> about a low carb diet, a ketogenic diet, a ketovore diet, mm -hmm. this is the mother of ketovore. And the mother of Beckett and Bonnie, who also eat a proper human diet. So if you have any questions about kids eating this way of eating, and I also ate that way while I was pregnant, yep. and I'm breastfeeding and eat that way as well. Yep. So I can cover that stuff too. So any questions about a proper human diet, now is your chance. This will be available on the replay if you are new. We go live every Monday usually at seven central the replay will be available immediately after this for those of you wanting to watch dr Bray's presentation on the keto shell channel which is premiering right now i don't know why they talk like Chris that Bear. thank you <laughs> that will also be available on the replay as well so yeah absolutely you can watch both. so um i was going to say something really I'm important so sorry oh um no i forgot oh, okay let's answer sorry. a question <laughs> sophia Endoscopy diagnosed with EOE, which is eosinic uh, esophagitis. Okay. So. Doc wants to start me on a steroid. I read this due to allergies to certain foods like dairy, eggs, and meat, and it's autoimmune issue. What are your thoughts? So it is uh, an immune issue. There's absolutely inflammation going on, and it is from the foods that you're eating. Uh, but it, just think about it ancestrally. Does it make any sense that a human being would be a, allergic or sensitive to meat and eggs? Unless you've been bitten by a specific tick, it's almost impossible to be allergic or sensitive to real meat and real pastured eggs. That's almost impossible. Um, the vast majority of people diagnosed with eosinophilic uh, esophagitis uh, a steroid will help the symptoms, but it's not going to in any way reverse the root cause. You got to stop all sugars out of your diet. You got to stop all grains, wheat, rice, oats, corn, all the others out of your diet. You've got to stop the vegetable seed oils. And for most people and liquid dairy, and most people, that's that's it. Uh, the, it goes completely away and their eosinophil count goes back to normal. Mitzi Champion. Hey, also, Mitzi. What happened? There she is. Uh, Mitzi also gave a talk on the low carb cruise. I encourage you to watch it because she is talking yes. about how to be a citizen scientist, how to be able to read studies, understand them and how to give credit where credit is due and yep. know where this study was done poorly. And mm -hmm. she really needs a YouTube channel. I don't know. Paula, I 100% agree. Nisha is fire this evening, mm -hmm. every evening, but especially oh, thank you. Thank you. This it's evening. the meat. It's the meat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We had another man, you guys are all over Scotland. the world tonight. What's up, Scotland, Texas? Man, it was so, so hot in San Antonio while we were down there. And it was going to get hotter the day after we left. I think it was 105 or something crazy. Wow. Yeah. You it was hot. Crazy. And it wasn't very humid, but it was just humid enough that the heat was awful. We didn't enjoy it. All right. Alonzo Vega. Hello, my father is 83 years old. And a few weeks ago, he has been suffering from cramps in his legs, feet, and it's reaching his belly. What could you recommend? So, Alonzo, I've got a video on this YouTube channel about all the different things that can cause leg cramps. Uh, there's a long list. And so watch that video after this live. But uh, the most important things is to make sure your dad's getting plenty of salt. Make sure your dad's getting plenty of magnesium, plenty of potassium, a good source of calcium, and um, not drinking too much water. A lot of older folks have bought into the myth 
that you need to drink two gallons of water a day, even if you're not thirsty. And that's untrue. And it can increase your risk of developing cramps. Nick, what are the best sources for magnesium on PhD? Dr. Berry, yeah. I'm pretty sure has a video I do. on that. I, don't I, do. You? I yeah. do. I have a couple of videos about magnesium on this channel, Nick. So after this live, you can watch that. Uh, but what's the number one? Source, you would say. Well, there's a there there's a bunch of the low carb veggies that are very rich in magnesium. Uh, uh, liver, any liver is going to be a decent source of magnesium. A egg yolks are a decent source of magnesium. There's lots of different sources, and it looks like when you're eating a very very low carbohydrate diet, your body tends to hold on to magnesium, and you don't need as much mm -hmm. as you would otherwise. Tia, what hey, Tia. do you do for fevers in your little ones? Let them That's run as course. Question. Are seizures from them common or something to worry about? Yeah. Um, so I'm a family physician and did several rotations at Le Bonner Children's Hospital in Memphis. And we were taught that it's not how high the fever is. It's not how long they've had it. It's actually the acceleration of the fever that increases the risk of having a pediatric seizure. Now, if a child has a, a febrile seizure from a fever, one time, that does not mean they have a seizure disorder. It does not mean they're at any increased risk of a seizure disorder. It's just something that happens in kids. Sometimes it's very, very rare. Now, what do we do when our kids, funny you should ask, because just what, how many days ago, just a few days uh, ago Bonnie, Bonnie Blue had a raging fever for three days. Three days. Three days. Yes. And what did we do about that? Uh, we did nothing at first because we were going to let it run its course, but monitor her, obviously, um, and pay attention to how she was feeling. Sometimes kids can run a fever and they, they feel fine. They're doing their normal thing. Uh, at night, she would be very fussy. And so we did give her a little bit of the infant Motrin, no dye. Um, it's not perfect. But we also don't want yeah. her to be miserable. There's no perfect yeah. medication out there. There, you know. And but she got three doses of that yes. over the course and of her the... fever got pretty high. I think the highest was like 104. Yep. Uh, so we obviously don't want her to be uncomfortable and in pain. So we mostly monitor for that. And then if it had gone past three days, we would maybe take her into a pediatrician just to see if something was going on. She didn't have a runny nose. Uh, she didn't seem to have an ear infection. Didn't throw up, she didn't have diarrhea. Yeah, so None of that. it was just a little bug. So maybe. let me say this again. And all, every parent and grandparent and aunt and uncle, listen up. Fever is not dangerous for your child. Fever is not bad. Fever is your body's attempt to fight off the virus or the fungus or the bacteria. Fever is a tool that your body is using. Now, there hasn't been a lot of research done on, well, if you give your child Tylenol every four hours or Motrin every six hours and keep the fever down, are you actually prolonging the illness? Uh, that makes a lot of common sense, doesn't it? Because if you're basically taking the hammer out of your immune system's hand so it can't do work, yeah, probably you are. But guess what? Uh, there's no money forthcoming for a study like that to see if giving to Motrin or Tylenol too often makes your baby sick for a few days longer. Uh, but also, again, let me say that fever is not dangerous. Also, Tylenol, Motrin, Aleve, none of those fix anything. They just control the symptoms for a few hours. And we were pretty sure she was cutting teeth as well. So I think it was a little I think it was a combo. More than maybe a little bit of a bug. Did you right. skip over a no, bunch I of didn't, stuff? No, it no, no. Looks like I didn't skip did. over anything. Thank you, Shireen. I didn't skip nothing, woman. Mm. Uh, Joey, should we steer clear of grocery store lard with BHT and BHA added? Is it deleterious? Uh, it, I would avoid it if possible. I don't. I don't think BHT and BHA are a huge issue. Uh, this is a lot of people are starting to use the term now. Don't major in the minors. So what that means is we want you to focus on very, very important things. So if your choice was, Joey, either to get the lard with BHT and BHA in it or to get canola oil, get the lard. Does that make sense? Because that's gonna that's a much bigger problem if you're eating canola oil. But if you can get it or just fry your own bacon and then collect the drippings, that's the best way to get it. Randy, shout out to Randy. In seven weeks, I've reduced my A1C from 10.5 to 5.5. Five. Huzzah. I was surprised and happy at that. Huzzah, Way Randy. Well done. He, you must have went strict carnivore to get it down that fast. That's awesome. Thank you, Cindy. 
Glad you're back. We're glad to be back too. Yes, we are. Rushman, say I wanted to have butter due to intense hunger pains during my mm. fast. How much is safe to consume without breaking the fast mm. and spiking my insulin? Yeah, so I don't think that pure fat breaks a, a meaningful fast because we know that carbohydrates spike your insulin sky. We know that protein raises it moderately. We know that fat does bump up your insulin a tiny bit. But for most people, if you're just using a teaspoon or two, which is what I would recommend, Rushman, if you're like really hungry, a, a pat of butter and a, and a pinch of salt, that's what you need. That's going to knock the edge off the hunger. That's not going to break your fast in any meaningful way. I don't think you're going to spike your insulin if you eat a whole stick of butter. Okay, but you will raise it a little more than if you just have a pat. Hatfield Homestead. Nisha, I have Hashimoto's been doing carnivore for almost 75 days. I'm still so tired. Any advice? Uh, I would love to ask you a bunch of questions, but here's the top three things that I would say could be causing this. Not eating enough salt. Um, a lot of us in the beginning need up to five grams of salt a day. You can get that <clears throat> by salting your food eating salty food, drinking electrolytes like Element uh, or the Keto Child Electrolyte Drops. Uh, the minerals have some sodium in them as well. So that's one. Eating enough fat from animal sources. So butter, fat that is attached to your protein, fatty ribeye, fatty pork, fatty don't bacon, eat, don't, eat, lean meat don't eat chicken breast, turkey, and things like that. And if you do, you need to add fat to them. Butter. Um, eggs which are just full of so many nutrients, including but not limited to uh, the folate, just all the things, like eggs are the perfect food. So if you're not including eggs in your carnivore diet, start doing that. If you're sensitive to egg whites, just eat the yolks. That's totally fine. And the third thing would be uh, iodine. Yes. If you haven't started using the Lugol's 2% iodine that Dr. Barry talks about in his iodine videos, go watch that video, buy them. You can get them on Amazon. Start putting a few drops, drops, like a raindrop, drop, drop into your coffee or water. Do not put them directly into your mouth. They will stain your teeth. Uh, and start doing that and see if that helps. But if you have more questions or you can always join our group, and uh, we do live Q and A's in there, and I can actually ask you questions. Where in the public YouTube videos, it's yep. a little noisy. And keep in mind that the mineral drops also have 500 micrograms of iodine in them, uh, and there's a link down in the show notes if you want to try those out. Also, Dennis B hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't done that already, please hit the thumbs up. That helps us reach new people. If you don't know where to find our community. <clears throat> This is where you go, right here. And we are in there chatting it up with you guys every day. Uh, Talia she was just live in there yeah, earlier I today. There today. And Talia Gone Carnivore, love being a member of your private community. 100% Carnivore, awesome. Recently high fat, AST, ALT, and GTT, possibly blocked bile duct, gallstones. What is the best way to clear it? Yeah, so if you have an actual blocked bile duct, you're going to be in severe, severe pain, okay? Uh, it, if your AST, ALT, and GGT are all elevated, this is a liver issue or at least a biliary tree issue until proven otherwise. You need an abdominal ultrasound, perhaps a CT of the abdomen, perhaps an ERCP to take a look at the duct. You get this needs to you need to be evaluated further. Definitely, there's nothing in a carnivore diet that's going to cause this, uh, but this needs to be evaluated. Maria, thank you, Maria. Victor. Victor says, hey, my doc put me on 10 micrograms of lyothyronine. Will carnivore diet readjust thyroid levels to normal while taking meds or should I consider tapering off? So what you should do, Victor, because many people who have hypothyroidism, when they go carnivore, they notice that they don't need as much thyroid replacement hormone. So what I want you to start doing is, is going in and having your doctor recheck your labs every six weeks for at least three times as you adapt to carnivore. And also pay very careful attention to your symptoms. And if you don't know what the symptoms of hyperthyroid are, look those up so you can be looking for those because it's quite possible you may have to decrease your dosage. Uh, Lisa, are you still a practicing physician and do you still see patients? Yes and yes. We're not taking any new patients at this time, uh, but we are working on an avenue in the future where I may uh, start seeing a few extra patients. I have a small patient panel that I see when they need me, uh, but I, I don't ever anticipate that I'll be seeing patients full time again. I, there's, there's too much important work that I'm doing 
on social media, writing books, making videos, and going and speaking at conferences. I feel like that my efforts are are multiplied much more by doing that than seeing people one on one in the clinic. But we do. Oh, there's the FedEx guy. Ooh, FedEx. We do live Q and A's inside the community again. So if you want to ask him a question, you can't get medical advice and you can't be his patient, but you can get a. I already did that. I was going to put it back. Sorry. <laughs> put it back up. I did put it. It back is up. up. I was going to take it down. Um, anyway, but very often, and, and she's right. We don't give any medical advice in the private community. But very often, all you need is the answer to a simple question, and that's what we can provide you in there. And then, using your own common sense, you can say, "Oh, okay." Therefore, and you can make your own decision. It goes away when I click on the comment. Ah. <clears throat> trust. I do trust you, Donna. Just want to thank you for helping all of us with sharing the proper human diet with us and life as a carnivore. I'm a few weeks in and love it, seeing big health benefits already. Huzzah, Maria. Maria K. GI Dog put me on uh, your your dial because uh, he thinks I have issues with bile ducts. Should I change my fat consumption? Well, if you're not eating enough fat, then you should increase your fat consumption. But if you're eating adequate fat, uh, then there's no reason to adjust your your fat consumption. Well, I feel like this is jumping a lot tonight. It, it feels jumpy, but way. I don't think it's actually jumpy. Hey, carnivorous me! Hey, hey, we had a blast with Amanda on the low carb cruise. If you don't follow her channel, you really should. I'm her so story. Happy to see her at our yeah, table. Yeah, so we we were sitting with her and her hubby. Uh, her story is amazing. Check out her YouTube channel. I think most of you already know her at this point because her channel is popping. Christina. Hi, I know ruminant meat is preferable. However, I grew up on a farm with pork and chicken. Wouldn't it, would it be bad to eat predominantly pork with some beef? If it's pastured pork, Christina, I, I don't personally think it's a big deal at all. But now if it's, if you're buying the cheap pork from the supermarket, then that's probably not going to be as good as beef. Uh, try to find a local farmer or rancher who will raise you a pastured pig or a forest pig, even better. Titans play. <clears throat> when I eat carbs, my sugar drops. I have to wear a monitor at night to wake me up because it continually drops below 55. Anything to do with hepatic insulin clearance and how would I test? Probably not Titans play. Probably what's happening is you're eating too many carbohydrates for your personal physiology. This causes a blood sugar spike and your, ins your insulin level goes up to try to pull that glucose back down, winds up pulling your blood sugar too low. I would highly recommend you, you immediately adapt a low carb diet. And what you'll notice over the next week or two is you stop having the, the low sugar episodes. John, I had labs done recently for my type 2 diabetes. A1C is 4.7 from 12.5. Huzzah! up! Weight is 233, down from 340. Ooh, wow. HDL is 55, triglyceride 76, LDL 180, all from eating like a human. It's simple, isn't it, John? Well done. William, first time watching a live. Welcome, William. Will I be a good candidate for either keto or carnivore? I have gout and had my gallbladder removed. So if any of you guys have had your gallbladder out, you can do keto, ketovore, or carnivore just fine. There's no problem, no danger, no issue. Uh, if you have gout, you absolutely need to go either keto or carnivore. I've got a video about gout on this YouTube channel. You can watch after this live, William, that explains exactly what causes gout. It ain't meat, my friend. Andrew Leinberger, triple B and E for three months, blood work, HDL 78, triglycerides 55, and I feel awesome. I've also lost 40 pounds. Thank you. I love it. Hey, everybody... Type in the comments what keto or ketovore or carnivore has done for your health, both mental health and, and physical health. Type it in the comments because there are people watching this right now who are like, this can't be true. I want them to see y'all's stories. Type those in the comments. Co-create. Can carnivore trigger and or cure AFib? So it depends on the cause of AFib. So definitely carnivore is not going to trigger a fit. There's nothing in a, in a proper human diet that would cause you to have a fit. If you already have pre-existing a fib, what many people notice is that their a fib becomes less severe and they have, they have runs of a fib less often when they adopt a low carb, proper human diet. Robin gave it super chat. And then Thank she you, said, Robin. I've been using element with iodine and Dr. Berry's daily minerals. It's so good. Perfect. Perfection. Linda. 
Type 2 with reactive hypoglycemia, PAD, and hyperlipidemia. Doc wants to put me on a metformin and other meds. Any advice? Thanks for the Yeah, depending on how high your A1C is, you may benefit from taking metformin or glucophage for a few months. Uh, but nothing is going to fix your high triglycerides and your elevated A1C except fixing your diet. You need to eat a proper human diet. You can pick keto or ketovore or carnivore, whichever one sounds best to you, and be very strict on them. And you can reverse your type 2 diabetes in anywhere from three to nine months. Stephen, starting carnivores lose weight. Will drinking black <clears throat> coffee nullify or stop my weight loss efforts or take me out of ketosis? No and no. Coffee does have a, a few grams of carbohydrate. I think a cup of coffee's got two grams of carbs. But for the vast majority of people, it ain't the carbs in your coffee that's slowing down your weight loss. Wendy, fix low parathyroid and... Med-resistant H. pylori. Um, so, Wendy, it's been a while since Wendy's been on the live. Uh, the parathyroid, you're going to have to follow up with your doctor uh, for that. You may even have to see a head neck, head neck surgeon. If you have hyperparathyroidism, typically that's going to involve surgery to take at least one of your hyper your parathyroid glands out. Uh, Med-resistant H. pylori can be a problem, but it also cannot be a problem. Are you having, first of all, are you on a proper human diet? If you're not, get on a proper human diet and be very strict on it for three to six months. You're going to notice that any heartburn, reflux, GERD symptoms you have get much, much better. There are many people eating a proper human diet who have H. pylori. They test positive for it, but they have no symptoms whatsoever. Their esophagus and their stomach are very happy. H. pylori, it's almost like a lot of us just have H. pylori living in our gut. It's no big deal unless you're eating an improper diet. John, to add to my last message, endocrinologist said to stop taking metformin and if labs look okay in six more months that I don't need to see her anymore. Yeah, how many of you guys would like to never see your specialist again? Well, John, after this next checkup, is not going to have to see the endocrinologist anymore because John adopted a proper human diet. Be like John. Jojo, what's your advice on sugar-free barbecue, ketchup, and other condiments? I'm straight carnivore, but my wife debates me all the time about sugar-free stuff. So sugar-free can be a marketing term, okay? <clears throat> Kraft Heinz and Hunt's and every ketchup company in the world let me be blunt with you, Jojo. They don't give a damn about your health, okay? They know that you want sugar-free ketchup, and so they'll put that in big letters on the front, but then they'll add things into the ingredients and not call it sugar, okay? So if there's any single word on the back of it that implies sugar, and you're like, I'm not sure what that word means, babe. What's, what's she need to tell me? Google it. Google it. Look it up. What does that word mean? We've got this internet machine now. You can look up anything, okay? So if, you, if you're able to watch this live, you can know what any ingredient in any food on the planet that you're about to eat is. Look it up. And if it's sugar, then it ain't sugar-free because they can, they, they can play reindeer games with the language and be like, oh, there's, this is sugar-free. But it's got, you know, um, dehydrated grape juice in it. Well, what is dehydrated or concentrated grape juice? It's pure sugar. That's how they do that. So your wife may be right, but even if she's wrong, don't tell her that. So to help you out here, there are brands that are good. Primal Kitchen is the one yep. we use the most. Uh, they do have a ketchup that is clean. It does have carbs in it. Right. Tomatoes also have carbs. That's right. You know, so um, just always check the ingredients list, but Primal Kitchen ketchup is the best. I think they also have a great steak sauce that tastes yep. a lot like A1 to me. And what you about barbecue always, sauce? Um, I don't know that there's a great barbecue sauce, but you can always make your own. And I prefer dry rub at this point. Too. Me too. Yeah, I'm, I'm smitten over dry rub ribs. Something we also do with the sauces, the clean, even the clean ones, is we add fat to make them go further because they are a little expensive. Yes. And that also adds to the flavor as far as I'm concerned. So I add some melted bacon fat in with my steak sauce and it's oh, good so stuff. So good. So good. Joey Blade says, cheers to a fit carnivorous couple like you two. Thank you, Joey. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Cindy, my cholesterol total is 255. HDL is 41. Trigs are 93. LDL 193. I've been prescribed Repatha infusing once a month. I did ask him at visit last week to lower my blood pressure. Lysinopril 40 to 20 milligrams. Want to come off both meds. Yeah. So there's nothing about your lipid panel. 
Your HDL could be a little higher, but it's not terrible. Your triglycerides are great. Uh, your LDL cholesterol is not in any way high enough to justify the risk of a Repatha infusion once a month. If you were my sister, I would say, mm -mm, don't do that, okay? But I'm not your sister, and I'm not your brother, and I'm not your doctor, so you have to make up your own mind. But I have got a video on this channel about is having your LDL cholesterol too low actually dangerous? So you might want to watch that, but I love that you have your lisinopril. Well done. This one. Mm -hmm. Margaret, while eating strict beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for two months, I ended up with a bad flare of mesenteric paniculitis. Thought I was healing. No prior abdominal surgery or trauma. Doesn't make sense to me. Uh, have you heard of this? Yes, I have absolutely heard of paniculitis. <laughs> this was not caused by eating a carnivore diet. This was caused by a bacteria uh, that got under the panis and caused this infection. <laughs> Lily, what are you doing? Your dog, man. J.D. Morgan, I'm confused. Doing carnivore over a year, ALT jumped from 63 to 94, so it was high, and then it went higher. All of the blood work is normal. A1C 5.2, kidneys, thyroid, all, all normal, lost 40 pounds, so no longer overweight. Is it dehydration? No, J.D. If your ALT is elevated and it's going up, uh, but your AST and GGT are normal, then you've got to have your, this has got to be investigated. There's something else going on with your liver. It's definitely not a proper human diet causing this. Uh, there's something else. There's a medication that you're taking that's causing your ALT to go up. There's something you're drinking that could be making your ALT go up. Uh, there could be over-the-counter medications you take routinely that could be making your ALT go up. Or there may be an uh, underlying problem with your liver that has not been diagnosed yet. you got to get that stuff checked out, okay? Angelic Annihilator, what are the best, most effective biohacks you have seen besides morning sun and avoiding blue light? So for me, the absolute best hack, and I've tried a bunch of hacks over the years for, for life extension, for losing weight, for looking younger, is to eat as close to zero carb as you can. That is the best hack, uh, I think, of any hack out there. Eat low carb, very low carb. Drink water when you're thirsty. If you're tired, sleep. Get out in the morning sun. Uh, as the sun sits and it starts to get close to bedtime, minimize the blue light and go more to a redshift light. Those, I think, are, like those are the best hacks in the world for human health and longevity. Uh, there are many, many other hacks out there, and there's lots of supplements that, that call themselves a hack that you can spend hundreds of dollars on. But if you're ignoring the things I just said and buying that supplement, you're wasting your time and your money. Would you add any other hacks that are really just? I would say the hack, like I feel like those are just common sense. Do what humans have done for, yeah. you know, however. The best hack is to just live a proper human life. Right. But that, that's not a hack to me. That just seems like common sense, <laughs> right? The best hack <clears throat> that I've personally implemented is the Huberman morning routine, which includes morning sunlight, but also delaying your caffeine intake. Yep, I like that one. And it takes some time to get adapted to that, especially when you're someone like me who is like, boom, wake up, boom, have a cup of coffee. <clears throat> I did it consistently for about six weeks and I could really tell a difference. Delaying the caffeine, getting that immediate morning sunlight and going to sleep. On like, what's the key to waking up early? Go to sleep at a normal time. Don't stay yep. up till 1 a.m. Yeah, uh, so true. Just if you watch that Huberman's morning routine, he really goes in depth about it. But it's hacking your dopamine. Yep. Dopamine is, re I'm really yeah. into the dopamine it's shit right now. <laughs> fascinating. And I actually, I follow that as well. But I've got to have coffee in the morning. So I just drink a decaf in the morning. That way I know the caffeine's not messing with my adenosine and my dopamine. Bill Rogers, I'm doing a ketovore CT scan. I'm doing I'm doing ketovore. ketovore. Had a CT scan recently, showed a large kidney stone in the left kidney. I read that a low-carb diet could cause the stone to come loose and cause problems and pain. What are my options? So you can either have the stone surgically removed. <clears throat> Depending on its size, you may have to do that. Uh, if it's small enough, then they can put a stent in and you hopefully can pass it like that. You can also have lithotripsy where they go in with ultrasonic waves and smash it to bits. Then you pee out the bits. Uh, or many people just keep eating a very low carbohydrate, uninflammatory, proper human diet. And the kidney stone just shrinks over time. But there is a risk 
is, and that may be what Bill's getting at, is when it gets small enough, it can actually move into the ureter or the collecting tubule, and then you, you're going to have some pain. That is absolutely true. And so you pro I would probably look at lithotripsy, first of all, just to smash it to bits and get rid of it quickly. That'd probably be the best go-to for you. Ray plays music. My cardiologist said my vascular Doppler report said that I have stable carotid disease. Why didn't my vascular surgeon tell me about this at follow-up? He's retesting me every year. So the vascular surgeon did not tell you that you had stable carotid disease. But if it's stable, that means it's not getting worse, which means it's stable. So it's nothing to worry about as long as you're eating a proper human diet. Uh, very often what is important to one doctor, one specialist, won't be that important to another doc. So the vascular surgeon sees carotid disease all the time, moderate and severe and terrible. And so he was un, unimpressed with your stable, probably mild carotid disease. Whereas the cardiologist is like, oh, you, he just mentioned it to you. He's kind of taking on the role of a primary care doctor. And that's that's why he said something and the vascular surgeon didn't. If the vascular surgeon had been concerned about it at all, bet he would have said something about it. All right. Semi-retired Bob. This is another great YouTube channel you guys need to check out if you don't already follow semi-retired Bob. I don't have room to say all of the improvements, but to the gout question, that is the exact advice I got from this channel 14 months ago and have not had a single gout attack since adopting a proper human diet. Huzzah. You know semi-retired Bob is saying huzzah. Before we, because it's half, half time, half time uh, let's go over all the different places we're going to be. You guys want to come see us in person, year. right? <laughs> so the very next <clears> thing <throat> is in August, and that is Keto Summit Orlando. Uh, we have a discount code. It is MEAT, N-E-A-T, KetoOrlandoSummit.com. The dates are the first weekend in August. I'm not really sure. I'm sure someone in the comments can put the details. We will be there. Um Watch Autumn Keto will be there. Two Crazy Ketos will be there. Who else is Westman going to be there? I'm not sure. I'm going to be there. Dr. Barry is going to be there. We're both speaking. It's Orlando. Right. It's going to be so hot. But there's a lot of pools. Yes. Now, I'm pretty sure there's a pool at the hotel. That the mm. gonna be in. So come hang out with us and see all these awesome speakers. And then after that, we have September is in Poland. I don't know how many people are up to go to Poland. Want to go to Poland? And then October, we will be in Gallenberg, Dollywood country. We will be hanging out with Taylor Keto Health. Rebecca is her name. But you can contact her on Instagram at Tailored Keto Health. Um, she will answer any messages that you send her as quickly <clears throat> as you send them. She's very on top of things. Uh, it is a small retreat that, that you stay at a beautiful cabin in Gatlinburg. The food is all included and it is some good mm -hmm. food. It is carnivore food, uh, but she makes it. They cook for you. You obviously can jump in and help if you want to. Beautiful views and uh, Maria Emmerich is going to be there and Kelly Hogan. Right. Kelly yeah, Hogan. Kelly Hogan's going to be there too. So if you want to hang <clears> out <throat> with us, Kelly Hogan and Maria then you can message Rebecca on Instagram at Tailored Keto Health. She's also on YouTube as well. So. Yep. We also have a, an event coming up in Dixon, Tennessee. Oh, yes. There's a link down in the show notes uh, if you want to check that out. If you're within 100 miles of Dixon, Tennessee, it's in Middle Tennessee. That's in August. Yeah, in August. Come see us and hang out. There's tickets still available, I know for sure. Also. Also, if you'd like a proper human diet t-shirt. Well, I was going to say something important. The Huzzah shirts Ooh. are now on shopphd.com and they come in all colors, tank tops, t-shirts, hoodies. Uh, I'm going to talk to Autumn who makes the shirt. She does a fantastic job mm -hmm. on getting some v-necks and some of y'all want some zip up hoodies. Uh, so we're going to try and see what <clears> we can do about that. But right now you can get the t-shirts, the tank tops and the hoodies. Say huzzah. I would have mine on right now, but we got back from Texas and we're not really unpacked. So I don't know no. where it is. But you can go yeah. check that out, shopphd.com. Yeah, I think that'd be a great conversation starter if you were wearing that and people were like, what's huzzah mean? You could say, well, I used to have type 2 diabetes and fatty liver, and I used to weigh 200 pounds more, and now I don't. So huzzah. huzzah. Yeah. Yeah. 
That'd a be lot awesome. of people, we need to do a video about why we use this all. We get asked that all the we time. We should do that. All right. Back to the questions. All right. David Whitmore. Struggle with telling people quickly about eating proper human diet. Now I just tell them to do the opposite of whatever the government recommends. Four years ketovore, never felt and doing better. Thanks. Well done, David. Well done. But yeah, just tell them to take the food pyramid and turn it upside down. That's that'll that'll get most people started off pretty good. Oh, let's see what else we got. Here's the Dax Corp. Three months ago, my A1C was 8.6. Three months later, it was 5.9, and I had also lost 50 pounds. Adopted keto. Thanks for the advice. Huzzah, 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 huzzah. We need a huzzah song, don't we? Tammy, <clears throat> triglycerides went up to 170, ketovore and under 10 grams carbs a day for eight months. All 35 pounds so far, doctor and myself are yeah. confused. There's several things that can cause this. If you did not fast for 12 to 14 hours before you got lab drawn, that can make your triglycerides falsely high. For some very few people, drinking coffee or tea the morning of your labs can cause your triglycerides to be high. Uh, also, if you're still actively losing weight, your triglycerides will, can still be temporary, temporarily high because of the fat transport involved in losing the weight. So don't sweat it. They're barely high. Just get them rechecked in three to six months. Juliana, kidney transplant recipient, carnivore since April 1st, January creatinine 1.2, BUN 24. Uh, in May, the creatinine went up to 1.5. Should I be worried about kidney function on carnivore? Why the increase? I, I don't know, Juliana. You've had a kidney transplant. You need to see your kidney specialist about that. There's nothing in a carnivore diet that's going to harm your kidney function. Uh, I would recommend, let's see, what was that between April, no, January and May? I'd get it rechecked again in July and see if, if it's still trending up and definitely get back in to see your doctor. But I'll bet you it's going to go back down. Richard over here says he watched one of uh, Nisha's old YouTube videos and I did not recognize her. She looks way younger now and better now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I She's think. a lot nicer too. I am. <laughs> Michelle, oh, RNY, yeah. uh, seven years ago, keto for three, stalled for one. A1C is now 4.8, ascending aortic aneurysm, reduced almost a centimeter, but still fat needed to lose for 100 more pounds. Gotcha. So you've had some good success and some improvement. And stop. But you, you got to get back on. So uh, Nisha and I both ha talk about stalls in various videos on our channel. And I also have a video called The 13 Reasons Why Your Weight Loss Might Stall. Watch that video. And if you know why you stalled, Michelle, if you're like, well, I know why I stalled because I, I was naughty, then stop being naughty because your health is too important. The only person you're cheating when you have a cheat meal or a cheat day or a cheat week is you, Michelle. That's who you're cheating and your children and people who love you. That's who's getting cheated. So stop that. Why was there a star? There's been that. I don't <clears> know. <throat> it just all popped up like a few weeks yeah. ago. I don't know. Southern Joe's. Strict carnivore, 120 days. HDL triglycerides, 78. LDL, 332. A1C went from 8.4 to 5.3. Uh, I've unfortunately haven't lost but two pounds. Yeah. So but. you've completely reversed severe type 2 diabetes. Right. And your triglycerides and your HDL are beautiful. You're so much healthier now, okay? The weight loss is going to come. For some people, that's the last thing to go is the weight. Uh, it's usually women, but sometimes in men. Make sure that there's not a diagnosis like hypothyroidism that's been missed. Uh, otherwise, keep doing what you're doing. Be curious to know if you <clears throat> took your inches before your 120 um, days, yeah. if you measured inches, or are, is, are your genes fitting better or differently. Um, make sure I'd you're keeping up that. with inches as well as pounds, just for you know you to know. Karina, go ahead, okay. baby. My God, <clears throat> we have, we are out of practice. Obviously, <laughs> 51 years old, have limes and pots. Was bedridden for six weeks from POTS, went carnivore for a month and a half, and now Lyme's diet. POTS is much better. Any suggestions to make it go? Yeah, I, I, my suggestion, Karina, first of all, congratulations on, on even knowing what the Lyme diet is. A lot of people don't know. 
Uh, I think that either a carnivore or a lion diet, anybody with pots, they're going to notice that it gets at least some better, if not drastically better. Uh, we don't know any long-term solution for pots, but as long as you continue the lion diet or at least carnivore, you're going to, you're going to keep the improvements that you've already, you're already enjoying. So keep doing that. Book. Have you read or listened to the book, mm. The Clot Thickens, The yes. Enduring Mystery of Heart Disease? Yeah, it's a great book. I don't I don't think there's an audible. I wish there were. But if anybody wants to know what actually causes heart attacks, read The Clot Thickens. It's a great book. Joe said he's law went from 34 to 31 in the way. So that's great. Yeah, okay. That's so perfect. Perfect. You're getting healthier every day. Aaron Michelle, depression, been 100% carnivore since January, 100% carnivore since January. Suddenly keep eating and can't seem to stop. Seems like depression. What about an antidepressant? I don't want to. Eating plenty of fat, confused. Why do you think it's depression? Why do you think that? Because you're eating. You, I don't understand. So you're eating 100% carnivore. That's great. But suddenly eating, suddenly keep eating and can't seem to stop. So if you're eating fatty meat and you're still hungry, then keep eating, Aaron. That's not necessarily a sign of pathology or a negative thing at all. Uh, you may have increased your activity level. You may be under more stress. There's multiple reasons why you might be needing more food. Listen to your body and keep eating fatty meat. Yeah, I don't think you need an antidepressant. Check in the box of depression. Like, are there, you'd have to, like, are there other things also? Mm. You're not sleeping. You are, you know. <clears throat> Not feeling yourself and, you know, lots exactly. of other things. Chris exactly. Cooking Nashville, if you haven't subscribed to him, you should. He has great recipes. He has some curious recipes. Yes, he has on a carnivore his carnivore mashed potato recipe. Yes. And I think Indigo Neely tried it, but I didn't get to finish watching her video to see what she thought about it. I'm interested, though. Haven't tried it yet. Hey, Doc, what are your thoughts on Dr. Ray Pete? Uh, Ray Pete's a smart fellow, but he's 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 right about a few things, but he's also wrong about a few things. So we'll have to show you both that. Jim. Uh, hi, I've been working uh, working carnivore for three weeks. Is pure, pure? sweetener okay? Mm -hmm. Organic alcohol, stevia leaf tract. Yeah, I think it's fine. I really want you to try to minimize the sweetener though, Jim. You don't need your coffee doesn't need to be super, super sweet. OK, try to use half the amount of sweetener that you've been using for the next week and then try to cut it in half again. Uh, your your coffee is going to taste just as good. I promise once you get used to it. Stella went to Scotland. I'm jealous. Stella. Lysia. Leisha. 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 Leisha? Mm, no, no. Probably <clears throat> wrong. Thank you both. We'll never know how much you have helped me change myself, my husband and my mentally handicapped son. Huzzah. Happy to help. Yeah, in absolutely. Any way. That's what we're here for. And good on you for taking the initiative. Yeah, you're the one that did the work. Yeah. We just ran our mouth. You did the work. Alonzo Vega, hello. What do you think of monk, monk fruit? I think if it's pure monk fruit, it's not a bad sweetener. But I think we should all be working to slowly minimize and decrease the amount of sweeteners that we use. There's no reason to be sweetening everything. You don't need that. Uh, also, Alonzo. I have stopped taking sugars. Good. Three months of carnivore, 14 kilos down. That's 30 pounds. 10% uh, body fat. But now I am three cups of coffee a day with Splenda and monk fruit. Do you have an opinion about it? Is it bad? It's not bad, but it's also not good. Okay. So what I want you to do, is keep drinking your three cups of coffee, but slowly wean down the sweetener, Alonzo. You don't need that much. This is a good tip for you guys. Happy Little says, some questions already have videos with specific answers. Search YouTube for Dr. Barry and the subject matter. So, for example, in the YouTube search window, you would type in Dr. Barry gout. Dr. Barry gallbladder. Yeah. Dr. Barry stems. Like, whatever. I've got 800 so videos. Many videos. So, I probably have got a video about the question that you have. Kimberly Lane, BSNRN. Hey, hey, nurse. Next time someone asks why carnivores are so red, not that we are, say because we are always outside because we feel so dang good. <laughs> yeah, we're not laying on the couch. We're out in the sun playing. That's exactly right. Christian. 
Carnivore since January 22nd. Fasting insulin was normal. CRP was one, although the blood work normal. A1C 6.2. You said that I'm one of those rare exceptions where the red blood cells don't move out as fast as everyone else's. Last time we talked, uh, A1C was 5.8. And so also, Christian, I want you to make sure that you're getting your A1C checked at an actual lab, like LabCorp request. I recently had a carnivore reach out to me and say, hey, I thought my A1C was 6.2. Uh, but I had just bought a kit from somebody, <clears throat> one of the influencers online. And when I actually had it tested at LabCorp, it was 5.4. And so I, I want to make sure that's not happening to you as well. Thank you, Rose, very much. Did, I thought there was a yellow one. Did we? Hey, yeah, it just bounced oh, okay, and then bounced. bounced. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Shannon, traveling out of the country soon. Advice on eating on the flight. In-flight meals are so full of sh carbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. So uh, what we talk about is ketovore, keto, carnivore, and intermittent fasting. So what I typically do on an airplane, and she's, she does something different. We're going to talk I about do. this. <laughs> I, do, I don't eat on the airplane, even if it's a 10-hour flight. It's just a 10-hour intermittent fast. I can do that. I can sip on some water or some coffee, and I don't have to eat. Now, if you must eat on the plane, then there are so many options, okay? Here's my favorite one. <clears throat> Peterson's Pickled Sausage. So good. They're, it, they're meat sticks individual. You can buy them on Amazon. Um, and they are freaking amazing. Yes. All right? Very clean ingredients, delicious, and well-sourced meat. That's one. Purse bacon. Very easy to do. You make your bacon, you put it in a Ziploc, you shove it in your purse. And TSA won't say a word. Boom. Uh, the third thing that I really love is pepperoni. Very easy to take with you and like some cheese. Yep. So it's like your own little snack pack. Take it with you. <clears throat> Carnivore crisps, also very good to take with you. Pork rinds, also very good to take with you. You can take your <clears throat> own food. And then if all else fails, grab you a burger with no, no bun at one of the little yep. places in the airport and just buy two or three extras to take with you on the plane. They don't smell awful. It's just a burger. Yep. Don't get onions. Be nice. Okay. And now <laughs> one of our followers, he takes a can of sardines mm -hmm. on the plane with him and he, he eats the sardines on the plane, but he said he's gotten some flack from the stewardesses about that, from the flight attendants. Sorry. Uh, so maybe, I mean, it would be fun though, right? If you do it, video it, that'd be great. Those are the easiest things to take. Um, <clears throat> keto, ketovore, carnivore. Uh, if you're someone who can tolerate nuts, yep. that's always an easy one to take as well. Ragnar Odinson. I love it. Found out my TRT injection med has seed oil in it. Should I be concerned? Probably not. Uh, you're getting the one little tiny shot of it. You're getting less than a, what, a, less than a cc of it once a week or once every two weeks or once a month, depending on how your doctor scheduled it. It's probably not anything to be concerned about. Rachel, are carnivore crisps worth investing in? Are they meal replacement or just enough to tide you over until you get home to eat? So what I use them is a chip replacement. So if I'm wanting nachos or I make some salsa and I want to dip a chip, that's what I use them for. Because I don't have time to make my own. I am confident that there are those of you in this chat that can make your own for much less yeah. dinero. Yeah, they're pricey. We do have a discount code. It's just Berry, B-E-R-R-Y, if you use them as I use them. I would not use them as a meal replacement. Mm -mm. There's no not way. enough in the bag. And no. also, don't eat them as snacks in between meals. We don't no. want you snacking in between meals. But you, they're, they're so wonderful to use, I as, use them a as a deal. tool. Yeah, like to instead of a nacho or a Dorito, you use that to dip your tuna salad, your chicken salad, mm. your egg salad, your uh, chili, guacamole. guacamole. Yeah, there's so many things you can dip with them, and they're they're crispy and crunchy, and you know there's literally meat and salt. That's all. Now that's I will say, if I was still doing 12 hour shifts at the hospital, they would come in handy yeah. because I, especially midnights, would want to just snack, snack, snack. So if my options were the vending machine or a bag of yep. carnivore crisps, then they would absolutely be worth the investment to have that option to just yep. reach in there, grab a bite, run down the hall, 
do what I need to do, come back, have another mm. chip, whatever, whatever. Yeah, that's a great point because we don't want you to snack at all in between meals. But if you must snack, then definitely snack on something like that. Oh, did you have one pulled up? No, that was it. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you do for ticks on your dogs so afraid of Lyme here in Ohio? What do we do for ticks for our dogs? Oh, gosh. I can't remember what. It's from the vet. The brand is. But I don't give it to them every month, even though that's what they tell you to do. They get it every other month in the summer and every three months after that. And we have not had a tick or flea problem on any of our animals. Same thing for the kitty cats because they do come in the house. I think they've had a dose of flea medicine once every four months. I just don't give it every month. I don't think that that is needed. Yeah. And we've not had an issue. It's needed for the company to make their profits, but it's not needed to keep the ticks off your yeah. head. Yeah. Haseem, I've been on keto and intermittent fasting for greater than two years. My doc prescribed me statins because my LDL is 157 and trigs are 152 and HDL 67. Should I be worried? Should you be worried about taking a statin? Perhaps. Yeah, but the your triglycerides are barely high. Your HDL is great. Um you probably don't need a statin. Sue. So. CAC 28.8, TRIGS 35, HDL 80, LDL 98, dilated uh, ascending aorta 4.3 centimeters, barely, barely dilated. LP little A 83, uh, APOB 86, insulin resistance. I don't know what that, that's a calculated score. Cardio wants me on Lipitor, is that warranted? No. Next question. You're a woman, so there's never been any research on statins done in women showing that it protects women from heart attack or stroke. There is no research your doctor can point to. Hey, thank you very much, Jennifer. Rachel, I do have a chicken salad recipe. It involves bacon grease. Yeah, it's like delicious. Is that on your YouTube channel? It is, and it's also on my so blog, good. I'm pretty so sure. Good. I use chicken thighs, not chicken breasts fattier it's more delicious with the skin on well i peel the skin off and make my own chicken skin chips also so out good. of it and yeah it's delicious what are we doing here well we're what happened we're at the end so i was looking oh okay yeah look at us Huzzah. all right we are caught up tonight uh bill tong yes bill tong's a great thing to yep. take on a flight yep. make your own beef jerky take it on the flight carol says hit the thumbs up everyone and also, if, if we've talked about a single thing tonight that you're like, you know, that would really help so-and-so, click the share button and send it to them. You can send it in an email, a text, a direct message, or you can just share it on your favorite social media. Did we get this one? I don't remember that one. No. Uh, Christian, carnivore since January 22, fasting insulin, normal CRP. There's one. Oh, I guess, well, no. All blood work. Okay. I want to say 6.2. You said that one. No, yeah. We already talked about that. We, we did? did that. Yeah. I don't Sorry. remember that one. Sorry. Maybe I was it. letting the dog out. Sorry. Me. Okay. Let me see what's going on here. Any questions, what does your guys? tattoo say? There's a whole video on my YouTube channel for those of you who always ask about this tattoo. Mm -hmm. Just look up Nisha Tattoo, and there's a whole video dedicated How to How can they tattoo. find your channel? All you have to do is search for my name. N-E-I-S-H-A. Nisha. Good job. If you have a kid, you know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Who was she um, mimicking right then, guys? Anita says, I love watching y'all. Nisha's facial expressions throughout no, the that could be, so entertaining. That could be the title of a horror movie. Sardines on a plane. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Mark says, how was the food on the cruise? You can go to, if you want to oh. pin his. The food on the cruise was good. I thought it was good. Um, there he is. Well, the dining hall has specific foods, and then the Windjammer was the, it, which is the buffet, has different foods every day. And then there's the, uh, I don't know what they call them, the specialty, specialty restaurants. restaurants that have more things. So we loved going to Chops, which is a steakhouse on the ship, and they had amazing lamb, oh, and their steak was so amazing. Good. So good. Windjammer is good to just go and grab. I think we had the burgers, and sometimes they would have. Uh, chicken thighs. It wasn't the like the windjammer is not our favorite, but sometimes it was yeah. easy. But there was always a keto or carnivore option at every single meal. Yeah. We, for breakfast, you could just have bacon and eggs if that's all you wanted. You did not have to go over there to the other junk. For lunch, you could have meat and cheese, or just meat and meat, or meat and eggs. Mm -hmm. 
you didn't have to go to the dessert bar. Okay. So just because you're on a cruise doesn't mean that you suddenly become stupid and start tripping and falling on the but dessert. But there's temptation. Bar. So there you, are. But you got to know that going in. I'm going on a cruise. Can I handle this? Can yes. You? Donna had a train trip for six hours, didn't take snacks, planned to fast. Trip was delayed three hours. Now, listen, you think, oh, God, that's bad. No, it's not bad. It's good that that happened because it helped her push past the stall. Read the book, Stay Off My Operating Table. She lost two pounds and broke her stall because the train got delayed. <laughs> See, anytime something bad happens in your life, you got to do what Nisha and I do. When something bad happens, what's the first thing I say? It's, this is a good thing. It's good that this, this happened. This is a good thing. And she initially wants to slap me, like many of you women are probably Not like, anymore. I would slap I'm your... Like, sure. And now she's like, no, he's probably right. This is probably a good thing. Most of the time. <laughs> Amber, have you seen the borax and water trend drinking in any thoughts? Yeah, don't do that. Borax. Yeah, it's dumb. Don't do that. That's dumb. Christian, Christian, yes, blood work done at LabCorp. Thanks for all you do. Okay, good deal, Christian. Thank God, you. You were just flying through. Angie. Him, hey, not work. Pop. There it is. There's, thank you, Angie, very much. I can't read. Okay, what? What do you want me to do? I want to look and see. Okay, there. Take it. Take the wheel. Oh my God! Someone's naming their cat Nisha. <clears throat> if you're gonna name an animal right. after me, it should name. be a cat. It should definitely be a cat. All right, Andrea wants to know if you're not hungry, you have to eat. No, no that's not no, what you said. Andrea. No, no, no. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Eat when you're hungry. I only want you to eat when you are truly hungry, not when you're bored, not when it's time to eat, not when everyone else is eating. I want you to eat if you're truly physiologically hungry. That's when you should eat. Rod wants to know, is there any commercial mayo without feed oil? Yes. yes. Primal Kitchen has a mayo and Chosen also has a very good mayo. Now, listen to me, Rod. There is no excuse to not make your own mayonnaise. It's delicious. It's easy. It's what? Three, three ingredients. You can make it with butter. You can make it with bacon fat. Or you can make it with avocado oil or olive oil if you're into that. Yep. It's easy. Make your own. It's so cheap. <clears throat> Three minutes, three ingredients, three cents of serving. Save you a lot of effectively. money. Effectively, yeah. You're welcome. Uh, we have a recipe, so to two crazy ketos. I'm sure there's plenty others out there. How does carnivore affect HPV? So a carnivore diet is going to rev up your immune system to its, to its maximum level, okay? It's going to optimize it. It's not going to make it supernatural. It's just going to make it the best it can possibly be. And for many people, that's going to keep the HPV beat down so that it, you, it minimizes any symptoms. It can also minimize your risk of cancer. Now, if you have one of the dangerous kinds of HPV, then definitely you need to follow up with your doc for the appropriate screening and monitoring. Uh, but many people notice that the, the outward symptoms, and you know what that is of HPV, they just go away or they just stop coming up anew. And so, yeah, 100% try carnivore. Somebody asked, does your son ever ask for a candy bar? Our son doesn't know what a candy bar is. He literally wouldn't know what to ask for. Uh, he knows one type of candy, and that's because there's a gentleman at church that gives out Smarties. Yeah, which I wish he would stop that. <laughs> it, um, there's, you know, we pick our battles. Some it's days. once a week. Some days I take them, and I will save these for later, and he never gets them. And some days he beats me to the punch. <laughs> You know, but yeah, that, it, and yes, it would make him sick if he got handed a candy bar and he ate the whole thing. I'm sure it would give him the muddy guts. However, it seems that he has a built-in governor on those type of things. And mm -hmm. anytime he's ever had the opportunity to eat something, <clears throat> like at a birthday party, he eats a few bites and then he moves on with his day. He's never eaten a whole piece of cake in his life or anything like that. He just doesn't want it. And I think when you feed a child, from day one, real human food. The first food that ever went into Beckett's mouth was meat and eggs. The first foods that ever went into Bonnie's mouth were meat and eggs after the boob, right? And so that's what their taste buds, when they're hungry and we satisfy them with meat and eggs, you understand you're training your child. That's what, that's food. Here is food. I'm giving you food. Eat this and you will be nourished and it will taste good and be pleasurable. And then you'll be full and happy. That trains your child. And so if you're training your child like that, when they, they might go, ooh, that tastes really good. But immediately they're going to be getting all these mixed signals. Like, yeah, it tastes good, but I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. They just want real food. That's if what you, they want. If you want to watch a video where I go in depth about what the kids eat, why they eat that way, and the 
how we are teaching them about food, there's a whole video on my YouTube channel. It's one of the last four videos. It's called Our Kids Super Restrictive Diet, which is funny. It's a great video. So, yeah. So T-Man, any suggestions for hemorrhoids on three weeks of carnivore diet? Doctor says increase fiber. Uh, that's going to make your hemorrhoids <laughs> worse. Yeah, that's not going to help at all. Increase your fat macro. You need to add fat, okay? Yeah, make sure you're drinking enough water. There's no need to drink unnecessary water if you're not thirsty, but make sure you're drinking enough water. Make sure you're eating plenty of fat and make sure that you increase your magnesium intake. That's going to make it easier for the, for the poop to come out, okay? What you want is you want to... People think, and we, we get trained after years of eating the standard American crap diet, that you've got to sit down on the pot and you've got to strain really hard to poop. In a natural environment, on a natural diet, when your colon has had time to adjust, you don't do that. You just sit down and the poop comes out. Okay? And your hemorrhoids will thank you for that. They'll be like, thank you for just letting the poop come out and not doing this while you're trying to poop. <laughs> okay, increase the magnesium, increase the fat, make sure you're drinking adequate water and keep eating your eating your fatty meat. Can Fiber's salt not going to help with that as well. If someone's oh, enough not salt. eating enough salt, enough salt, 100. Yeah, uh, but but uh, yeah, absolutely. Salt, magnesium, fat, and drink adequate water. Someone please do a reaction video, but or like edit this video where it's just my reactions to what he says, and that would be a great video. <laughs> yeah, make it short. That'd be great. <laughs> Ask Linda Medicare. Linda knows about Medicare. Will carnivore help H HLA, B27 symptoms, and Dupuytren's contracture? So uh, HLA, B27, the symptoms are going to be uh, less severe, and you're going to have flare-ups less often. Dupuytren's, once it's, once it's stuck, you're probably going to have to have surgery to break that loose, Glenda. Uh, but could, so the, the, the question I would propose is, can a carnivore diet prevent you from ever developing Dupuytren? Which I would say 100% yes, it's going to decrease the risk of you ever developing it. But if it's, if it's really a stuck down contracture, you're going to have to do physical therapy, if not a surgical release. Okay, that is it, my friends. Our hour is up. Uh, sorry if we didn't get to your super chat. We try to get as many as we can. Uh, in the hour. In the in the hour. Uh, the babies are coming home here any minute, so we've got to hang out with our lovely cheer and, and feed them some meat and eggs. If you want to hang out with us some more, you can always join the community, drberry.com slash community. Uh, you can join for $5, get access to an extra live Q&A. Because we're going live again tomorrow, tomorrow. at 6 p.m. Yeah, you can also hang out with other like-minded individuals, get support from our mentors and myself and Dr. Barry. Also, there's behind the scenes, exclusive things. You get early access uh, to interviews. You get access to the live interviews where you can ask your questions to the, uh, what do we call them? The health experts because not all of them are doctors like kelly hogan's been in there she's not yeah. a doctor but she has a wealth of information absolutely things like that so if you're interested go here if not guess what we'll yeah. be here next week another Bye. great thing that people do inside the group is they can find people who live near them geographically and so so many people now from being in our private community they have an actual coffee buddy irl you know what that means Life. That's what that's the right. kids say. That's what the kids say. Or they can have meetups. Get it? Yeah. Before you go, I want to say a big thank you to all of you who have subscribed to my channel. I hit 150,000 subscribers. Huzzah! Very, very thrilled about that. Thank you for your support. If you haven't already subscribed, head over there. Maybe you want to hang out with me. Maybe you don't. But thanks to all of you who have been hanging out with me for the past five years. Wow. It's been a long journey, but it's been worth it. We'll see you next week or maybe tomorrow. Love you, mean it. Bye.